currently Beverly and I are in Conway and there is some fantastic things to see just a short walk from the marina we have castles we have um, boats we have quaint little shops with lots of little bric-a-brac and if you have a heart problem there's even a defibrillator in the telephone box We had actually listened to the forecast before we left Conway and it wasn't really all that bad. The conditions we found outside once we had come out of the river were much worse than what had been forecast. However, it was only a short sail of about 10 nautical miles so we decided to proceed. Okay, it's the view from the kitchen window. Um, we're not actually sailing. The um, tide is running so fast that um, it looks like uh, we're moving, but we are on a mooring ball, as is the boat over there, and the water's moving, not the rest of us. This was today's weather forecast, and the classic phrase on it is no gale warnings in force. Uh, I particularly love this bit here. Southwesterly 4 or 5, occasionally 6. Yeah, 24 hour forecast from the south southwest, variable 2. Yeah, what we actually got was a 4 8 gale. So we're parked up in Bomaris, where we were helped by a very nice skipper who showed us a mooring ball and helped us get onto it. So Thank you very, very, very much to him. And at the minute, in this sheltered little spot, it's blowing a gale. Coming experts on mooring. So Gainer, how are you coping with the stressful yacht lifestyle? <sighs> I just don't know what the last. But um, there's some times where it's just so easy and relaxing and then there's other times when it's all going to... and it's like woohoo! Like yesterday we had these plans and quite frankly the weather wasn't allowing us to do the plans, so you just have to change them. Mm -hmm. Get over it. Oh, nice boat. Oh, you just got uh, channel zero and uh, standby turn two. Okay? We're hearing a lot of lifeboat traffic in the last day or two because the winds have been absolutely shocking. The weather forecast has been, to use a Terry Pratchett phrase, an abomination unto Nuggan. They are certainly the greatest word of f work of fiction published by the UK government. <laughs> Especially as there's no gales at all yesterday. But I'm sorry, but we were in Force 8 at one point. Yeah, we were sitting in a Force 8 and the... Uh... I am classing that as a gale myself. 
In spite of the gusty weather, we lured the dinghy off the back of Salty Lass and went over to the pier. We then went for a quick tour around Bomaris. It was quite clear the windy weather was not putting off any visitors or locals, and there was lots of people crabbing, and the place was absolutely bound. As well as the local pill, there are things like rib trips and fishing trips. It's difficult to see down at the end of the street, but Bomaris is clearly another place that has a castle. There's some absolutely great little shops that go way, way back and are much, much bigger than they look. You can see why they called it the Penny Farthing there. And some lovely little courtyards. Little Italian delicatessen thing. Yeah. Yeah. Size of Gaynor okay, couldn't resist a tour of the castle garden, so in we went. Gertrude, Marjorie and Beth. I'm hoping those are the names of the people responsible for these particular things and not the remains of the dearly departed, which are being recycled as fertiliser. We've got some locally sourced Welsh lamb from the butchers and this is how you make new potatoes and boiled potatoes on a boat. You simply get your potatoes, put them into boiling water and leave them there for an hour. And after an hour they are a lot softer. Carrots don't keep particularly well on a boat so we've got some tinned carrots um, and they're fairly flavourless so what we'll do with those is we'll put them in with some onions, a bit of honey, a little bit of garlic, add some flavour to them. So we're going to have Welsh lamb with um, new potatoes and things like that so hopefully it'll taste really really nice. And um, the, pers the person who's booked the restaurant is sitting over there reading. I'm still lounging from this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> and she is uh, patiently waiting for food to turn up. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Normally I would grill these, but because my cooker on here does not have a grill, I've got very little choice. So it has to be done this way. <laughs> Doesn't look too shabby at all, does it? No. Lamb chop. Lamb chop, potatoes, carrots and onion gravy. Well, I don't know if you can hear the slap of water on the hill and the howl of the wind through the rigging, but it's got a bit gusty here. So we were going to discuss passage plan through the swellies, but I think what we're going to do instead is just sit back and wait for this to blow over and hope that tomorrow is going to be better. Don't have to, because we've got to go. Yeah. The, uh, we've managed to get a mooring buoy for two nights. Uh, which is good. This is but, this being the second night. This being the second night, but the uh, people who um, own the mooring boy are coming back tomorrow. And they'd like it back, please. They'd like it back, please, but at least they've managed to let us have it for free. <laughs> so we'll be um, going down to Menai Bridge and finding somewhere there to mirror up, but I think we'll just take it easy for a bit. Mm, no, put, the cent put the central heating on. Oh yeah, get the Emma's back and go we go. Yeah and just see where we go. Yeah, but the, uh, the um, heating's all prepped, so, you know. I shall push the button. <laughs> <laughs>